Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Jana Harris, I'm a principal front-end engineer, and today I'm going to be using O1 Preview model in my Cursor AI development environment. So yesterday, OpenAI had released an O1 Preview model that's supposed to be better at thinking through complicated and multi-dimensional tasks. I tried to get it to work with my Cursor AI yesterday by getting an API key from OpenAI, nothing worked. So instead I went to bed, walk up and first check the list of models on Cursor AI. And lo and behold, here you go, the O1 Preview and O1 Mini is now available. For those of you who are new to Cursor AI, this is how you check before we get started. Go into the Cursor Preferences, Cursor Settings. This is a list of models that you have available. This is a dropdown that you need to choose to make sure you're using the right model and the model of your preference. I'm going to go with O1 Preview. O1 Mini is supposed to be faster. This is a workout app, currently just a web view. So right now we are working on the athlete dashboard. You're supposed to have a list of exercises, but in my mind, it would have been better if I could have a calendar and see what my week is going to look like in terms of the workout. It is one of the common components. This is the first time I'm trying to use O1 model. I'm not sure if it will be able to create new files for me or if it'll only provide instructions that I can copy paste into an actual file, but let's try. I need to take a file, copy it, place it in a different folder, then add a calendar view to it. Make sure it has a month and a week toggle, as well as markings for the upcoming workouts. I'm also asking it to use Radix UI as a component library. It gives me the preview, the suggestion. I see that it's added another component called calendar container, and it's actually using the theme from Chakra UI, which is one of my other dependencies, to specify the styling. Now I have a custom day component that's also a style component. Now I see the only component being used from Radix is toggle group and toggle item. There should be a reusable calendar component. Let's apply it and see what it looks like. But first, we're going to install Radix UI, React toggle group as a dependency, as well as data finesse. Data finesse is a library of my preference when it comes to date management. I know it's not the most lightweight, and I'm not sure if it's the most modern anymore, but that's just a comfort item for me. If I click apply, now it's generating. It looks like it's using the same file instead of creating a new file. So this instruction was not followed. It's interesting, it found my utility files and it knows the content. It knows which constants I have available. The reason this dashboard file is giving errors is that I think it assumes that it's supposed to be placed inside of the athlete folder, but it currently is not. So let me do that. I'm gonna say move. And it looks like React toggle group doesn't have the toggle item. Let's see how AI can fix this. So let me look for item in the Radix UI file definition. Let's see. Toggle group item props, toggle group item. Toggle group item should be available. So close. That doesn't look like calendar at all. Hold on. Since Radix UI does not have a calendar component, I just need a calendar grid. So let's go ahead and replace it with React Calendar. I'm going to run React Calendar installation. Now it's adding my calendar within the dashboard. I don't want to mix my motion based style components with CSS and GS, as well as with standalone CSS files. I have nothing against standalone CSS files, but I simply would like to stick to a single approach. Here's the dashboard files within my athlete folder. It tells me where it's supposed to be located. I have the workout list, the calendar container, and the additional style for the selected workout day. I'm just gonna apply and accept. Looks like this is not being used anymore. Let's see what other errors I have. Keeps doing that funny thing. I'm gonna do the lazy thing. Fix typing errors. Been doing that a lot in the past couple of days. Sometimes it works. It saves me some time for sure. Still an error here. Yeah, I see that. Let me see. Take it out in a handle function. Easier to manage types this way. Go into us, accept this change. Where is it? Forgot to create the function. So what's the issue here? We gotta check if this is available. Try. That looks like a calendar. It has one day selected, which is today. I had some workouts in July, so let's go back. Here we go, we have July workout selected as circles, which is a questionable choice of styling. Remember, I wanted to see the week view as well as the month view. So it looks like O1 Mini had removed the week view. Does React Calendar support a week view? I don't want another calendar dependency. It sounds like React Calendar does not support a week view. The second approach is to implement a custom week view on top of React Calendar. It says React Calendar doesn't support it. 
and implementing a weak view may involve hacking around the component's intended functionality. I don't want to do that. Just in terms of future proofing this design, if the new version comes out, I don't want it to be a break and change for me. So now the third version is combined React Calendar with additional components. And that means the O1 Mini is going to build a custom component for me just for the weak view. Let's see. Let's follow approach three, build a custom weak view for me such that I can go back in time as well as make it available upon the toggle on the top of the page. So it's suggesting to create a separate weak view component. It's adding some data FNS functions. This is a completely custom styling, except for some Chakra UI theming, container navigation grid, and the day card. Some hard-coded colors, which I don't love, but we're going to let it slide for now, just for the speed's sake. Some hard-coded values for things like border radius. It's totally fine when I'm prototyping. I can put pixels here and there, and I don't have to have variables. But since we have a component library present, in fact, I even have two at the same time, I would love to have a theme that I follow. And if the theme needs to be extended, I would like for it to tell me that instead of creating a custom, and I want to say random, sizing or spacing value. Okay, let's create this component. So it doesn't look like it's able to create a file. Let me know in the comments if Cursor AI doesn't have access to my file system. But since it can write inside of the file, it should be able to create a file from scratch. But I don't see that happening. I'm starting to work with Cursor AI. Please let me know if I'm not following the right approach. Your comments will be helpful. On a dashboard, I copy pasted the weak view. Coming back to the dashboard, I'm going to simply apply these changes to the dashboard. Okay, interesting. Another learning moment for me. I had an option to apply for the entire file or option to apply to the dashboard, which is the name of the file. It was not entirely clear to me what the difference is. I'm going to reject this because it started adding my dependency imports at line 37 instead of updating the entire imports at the top of the file. So I'm going to reject, apply to the entire file, accept everything, fix a recurrent issue with the toggle group item. So this is funny. For some reason it's suggesting I do this, which makes no sense. It doesn't have an exported member as a calendar type. Let's take a look. It should have it, but I think US is not one of them. So the Gregory is the one we need. I don't know why I chose US. This is a mystery to me. This can be null. We remember that from last time. So toggle group item is not imported. Let's do that. And for set current date, yeah, that's not right. We're going to have a similar situation where we have value and event. And I guess we're going to try and do value, but only when value is present. This is a month view and this is a week view. It doesn't look very responsive, does it? My date selection doesn't actually do anything because the own change function was incorrectly typed. This view is also not very responsive. I don't hate it. I don't love the previous and next instead of the icons. Let's go back to July, the week that I actually have workouts. Hey, look at that. That's not bad. So it has the workout days highlighted. It doesn't say what workouts those are. I don't want to add a tooltip because this is supposed to be mobile friendly. But before we get to this deeper question, let's fix two things. And two, the next and previous buttons should really be an iconography. Let's start with icons first. I'm going to open the Wick view. This is the file. I'm going to replace the next and previous buttons with iconography from Radix UI. However, at the same time, I want to make sure those buttons retain their labels. This is important for accessibility. When somebody's using a screen reader to navigate this experience, instead of hearing left chevron and right chevron, they will know that this button is responsible for going to the previous days and then the other button is responsible for going to the days in the future. Okay, what's different here? One thing that would be amazing, since I am reviewing every change that Cursor AI is suggesting, is to see the actual delta. And the delta is not obvious to me right away. At the top of the file, I see the icons have been imported from Radix UI. That's great. Let's use an HTML button. Can we actually use Radix buttons? I'm sure Radix must have button. Let's install the icon package first. I know I will need this. Oh, look, it does give me the delta. I was just not reading low enough. It's adding area labels, the hidden for the span attribute. 
as well as the CR only class, which is a hidden pixel right here. I don't know why we have navigation buttons still based on the default HTML button. Let me ask Radix UI should have amazing accessibility support. So why build from scratch? if We can take advantage of the work someone has already done. I'm being really picky about my UI. Let's scroll down. It says it's using react slot. Doesn't provide dedicated button component in its core lab. Why would I need a slot? It's not explaining why would I need to use a slot? I would rather just go back to the style button instead. Hey, let's give it a try. Maybe it knows something I don't. Deprecation warning is that this file is getting a little out of hand, getting a little too big, but let's worry about it in a second. Switching to the Wick view crashes the app. Surprise, React children only expected to receive a single React element child. Doesn't tell me where the error is coming from. Let's go back and look at the previous example. Apply the one without the slot. Accepted. It doesn't crash better than before. I still see previous and next, which is not terrible, but not ideal. So where are they hiding? It did tell me over here, replace these button with the snippet here. Just apply it, added that at the top, apply this style. It looks like it should really go over here, although it didn't quite happen this way. That's okay. I don't want to convert this manually, so fix with AI. I'm just going to manually update this button. Feels like a quicker change. Now these buttons are as desired. We still have an overflow problem. Let's see if the accessibility is in place. Area labels is here. Area labels here. Almost, I feel like we did a little too much. We have two labels present. Never heard of such thing as too much accessibility. Going to handle the overflow behavior. Make sure that it either just gracefully handles the overflow, and it could be that it just decides to add scrolling. Ideally, achieve that without scrolling. So it could be that we just have to squish the days and make it smaller width. Although that in return can actually be detrimental to the top target because we do want the top target to be sufficient width and height. This is supposed to be used on mobile devices. Before we look at the entire file, let's scroll down and read the explanation. It's gonna set the min width to zero, margin and paddings and shrinking. Let's give it a try. But something tells me it's going to be a little ugly. And I was right. Is there just too much padding? I feel like that's the problem, right? Now that I see active days actually having a bright background, I don't think it's too much. I think this is still within the realm of possibility. We just don't have the right font size to make sure that it doesn't wrap so much. Honestly, I'm questioning why we even have July in each cell when we have July at the top of this row. I had to get a premium subscription for Cursor to use the O1 model today. It's one day after the release. I get there is a lot of hype going on right now. I did not configure a usage-based pricing. So I'm stuck here waiting for 80 seconds, which is not really playing well in my mind in terms of using it to increase productivity. If I'm just idle for 80 seconds, that's not really increasing productivity. I might as well drop it all and go write the code myself. It's really up to me. I actually have heard an opinion that a lot of the AI models and third-party apps have been raising prices for subscriptions. Running an O1 model is extremely more expensive than even the 4O. So I understand they're trying to recoup some prices, which I think we actually won't be able to cover with a marginal increase in subscription. But it now creates this barrier for folks that are not willing to pay more for their AI subscription, that they won't be able to use the latest and greatest tools anymore until they become more democratized. I don't like inline styles. With those changes, that's better. This is more than enough for me for the week view at this point in time. One thing that I've noticed is I actually don't have a toggle state selected. I am in the week view, but it's unclear that's happening. Oh my goodness. Now I'm going to wait for 160 seconds. I'm trying to remember. Radix UI did have a, a heading component within the topography. How do I install it? And which dependency does it come from? This is tricky with uh, new component libraries that allow you to pick and choose which part to add as a dependency. And I think that's fair. Here we go. It's right as UI themes. But now I have to install 5,000 dependencies. 
and read their documentation or ask ChatGPT where and which package is the component that I'm looking for. So over here, npm install, npm install, radix UI themes. Okay, that's the one. Import. Yes. I have this H3, right? I want to make sure that I'm using size four. What happened here? Okay, this is much better. Got my response back for the toggle behavior. I introduced a new state variable. I've added changes manually. I'm worried because I've added the heading and it's not present over here. And if I say apply, is it going to override it? Let's just see. Apply to the entire file. It removed the heading, which I don't want to happen. Let's wait until it's done. Yeah, I'm going to reject it. Okay, this makes more sense now. Go back to dashboard and I'll go same toggle behavior chain in the dashboard file instead. So it sounds like I have to really keep track which file it's suggesting to make edits. Because if it was just me working manually, I would know how to make sure that I'm working in the right file. But here it just made a bunch of suggestions. Toggle view within the weak view, which is incorrect. Weak view is only present when the weak view is toggled on which means that toggle control is actually outside. Let's see if we have the view. Yeah, we have the view. Anything like that. I'm gonna have to go on the Radix UI and look for toggle. It clearly has the active state. This is what's interesting. When you look on the Radix documentation website, it does have toggle group .item mentioned. However, when I'm trying to actually import it from the Radix library, the toggle group item component exists. The documentation is not up to date. So let's look at the toggle group item props. Do we have pressed over here? It says aria pressed. We can use that. Thank you for auto completing this for me. That was nice. And then we're in a weak view. We have aria check true. Let's just leverage this. Find the view toggle for a button with aria press true. This is not perfect, but at least I know what I'm dealing with. Again, this is not perfect. This is not the final design. I would not have put ovals for selecting the date in the calendar of month view. The wig view, I have to say, is looking pretty good. I have not tested it with a screen reader. I do have an assumption that it's probably not very accessible. But within a few minutes, I was able to go from no calendar view, having no idea whether Radix UI or Chakra UI even had a calendar component, to a functional view with a toggle that gives me actually two different views that I can then use, that I can rely on for user preference and choose what works best for me. This is not mind blowing for me yet, but I don't think I'm using it right. Let me know the better way to use O1 Preview with a Cursor One environment, or maybe I should be asking O1 Preview to write entire systems instead of going file to file and trying to enhance an existing experience. Should I be focused on individual components and parts of the interface or just give it a rough draft on the napkin and hope for it to build an app that I will be happy with? As somebody who tinkers with the minute detail of a user interface for a web app or a mobile app that I build on a daily basis, as a part of my job, I find it hard to relinquish control over how entire system comes together. I'm mostly looking for very targeted help with a specific part of my UI. It could be that I'm approaching this wrong. Let me know in the comments if that was interesting to watch and maybe there is a better way to rely on the system to be more productive than I was today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sure there's going to be more discoveries to come on how O1 is going to enable all of us be more productive and efficient in software engineering. Subscribe for more content like this in the future and have a